What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Crypto Breakdown Layer 1 Blockchain Whiteboard Mini Series. In today's video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about the Monaro cryptocurrency, aka XMR. Let's just say that Monaro could potentially be one of the most powerful cryptocurrencies in the world. But the question remains, will the powers that be let it happen? Can they even stop it if they wanted to? Time shall tell. Let me give you a brief rundown on what Monaro is and then we'll dive into how Monaro actually works. Monaro was launched in April of 2014. It was a fair pre-announced launch of the crypto note reference code. There was no pre-mine or insta-mine, no portions of block rewards go to developers. Luckily, Monaro had some awesome founders. The founders proposed some controversial changes the community disagreed with. A fallout occurred and the Monaro core team forked the project with the community following this new core team. The core team has provided oversight ever since. Monaro has made several large improvements since launch. The blockchain was migrated to a different database structure to provide greater efficiency and flexibility. Minimum ring signature sizes were set so that all transactions were private by mandate and ring CT was implemented to hide the transaction amounts. Nearly all improvements have provided improvements to security and or privacy, or they have a major facilitated use case. Monaro continues to develop with goals of privacy and security first, ease of use and efficiency second. Monaro uses a proof of work algorithm called RandomX, an ASIC resistant and CPU friendly proof of work algorithm created by the Monaro community members. Designed to make the use of mining specific hardware unfeasible, Monaro previously used CryptoNite and variations of the algorithm. Now let's talk about their token emission curve. To make sure that there will always be an incentive to mine Monaro and keep the network safe, the emission is infinite, meaning that there is no max supply. But there are two main emission schedules. First, the main curve, which takes Monaro to 18.132 million coins out in circulation, and that ended in May of 2022. Then in June of 2022, the tail curve kicked in where 0.06 XMR tokens are released every two minutes per block. This means that Monaro now has less than a 1% inflation rate, which decreases over time. Now, unlike Bitcoin, which has a 10 minute block time, Monaro has a two minute block time. And unlike Bitcoin that has a one megabit block size, they implemented what are called block reward penalties, and they have dynamic block sizes to ensure dynamic scalability. I mean, gosh dang, what a cool project. What's crazy is something like this could be used for so much good to help protect the innocent retail investor against big business and big tech. Now let's talk about the tech and see if we can actually figure out how Monaro works from the inside. The first privacy coin was not Monaro. There were actually several that came before Monaro. The first project to use the crypto note protocol was actually Bitcoin, BCN, followed by Budacoin, BDC, Paladin Coin, PLD, Bullberry, BBR, then came Monaro. Crypto note currencies use a distributed public ledger that records all balances and transactions of its built in currency, just like Bitcoin. But unlike Bitcoin, crypto note transactions cannot be found through a public blockchain in a way that reveals who sent or received coins. The only people with access to that set of data about the transactions are the sender or the receiver of the transaction and the person who possesses one or both secret keys. Monaro hides the sender's information. Monaro hides the amount being sent. Monaro hides the person's IP address and Monaro hides the receiver's address. The sender's address is made anonymous by using what are called ring signatures. The amount is hidden by what is called a ring confidential transaction, also known as a ring CT. The transaction broadcast, aka the IP address, is hidden by what is called Core V, which is a IP2 router. And last but not least, the receiver's address is hidden by what is called a stealth address. Now, let me explain how each one of these works. The main two topics I want you to focus on are untraceability and unlinkability. The US dollar is untraceable, meaning that when you go into a gas station to buy a can of Red Bull, when you pay the clerk, there is no way for that clerk to look at the dollar you just gave them and tell where it came from or where it was spent before you brought it into the store to pay for your Red Bull. This is super important and this is how money is supposed to work. 
Now unlinkability is slightly different. When you create a Bitcoin wallet, the blockchain gives you a wallet address that is 25 characters long. The Monaro wallet addresses are much longer. Think of it like a bank account number, but it's public, which means that if I know your Bitcoin wallet address, I can see exactly how much Bitcoin is in your wallet right now. I can see every transaction because Bitcoin uses what is called a public ledger. When you send Bitcoin, what you are doing is you are announcing to the world, AKA the Bitcoin network, that you wanna transfer Bitcoin from one wallet to another address. When you hit the send button, that transaction is sent to a mempool, which is a big pool of transactions. Those transactions are normally separated in chronological order based off the gas fees. Miners grab the transaction from the mempool and they put it into a block. After the transaction is completed, the transaction is permanently linked to your wallet. The funds in your wallet are public. Unlike Bitcoin, your Monaro coins are not associated with your public address. Let's pretend like Ashley wants to send Bree $100 worth of Monaro. On the left, we have Ashley's wallet. On the right, we have Bree's wallet. When Ashley created a transaction that sends 100 XMR tokens to Bree, this is what happens. The XMR protocol creates a one-time public address called a commitment public key. So instead of Ashley sending coins directly to Bree's address, the coins leave Ashley's wallet and then end up in a newly randomly created wallet address that neither Bree or Ashley know. That address is the commitment public key. The public key commitment address then creates what are called stealth addresses. The stealth address sender key is sent to Ashley. The stealth receiver key is then sent to Bree. Now that Bree has the stealth receiver key, she is able to receive the Monaro from Ashley. And now Ashley has the sender key, which means that Ashley can actually verify that the Monaro was sent. Pretty cool, right? Your public address will never appear in the list of transactions on the public ledger. There is no linking of transactions or any data on chain that links transactions publicly, but it gets even better. Let me play this short clip from Monaro's website and explain what ring signatures are. In our last video, we illustrated how Monero stealth addresses prevent outputs from being associated with the recipient's public address. This is accomplished by the use of one-time destination public keys. One-time public keys are only spendable by the recipient and only the recipient is able to detect their designated output on the blockchain. Since all outputs are unlinkable, the privacy of the recipient is ensured. On the input side of the transaction, the sender's privacy is protected with the use of ring signatures. A ring signature is a type of digital signature in which a group of possible signers are fused together to produce a distinctive signature that authorizes a transaction. This is analogous to the signing of a check from a joint bank account, but with the actual signer remaining unknown. The digital signature is made up of the actual signer combined with non-signers to form a ring where all members are equal and valid. The actual signer is a one-time spend key that corresponds with an output being sent from the sender's wallet. The non-signers are past transaction outputs pulled from the blockchain, which act as decoys. These outputs together make up the inputs of a transaction. To a third party, all of the inputs appear equally likely to be the output being spent in the transaction. This feature helps the sender hide the origin of the transaction by making all inputs indistinguishable from each other. You may now be asking yourself, if there is no way for a third party to verify which output is being spent, what would prevent someone from spending the same output twice? This potential issue is addressed by the use of key images. A key image is a cryptographic key derived from an output being spent and is made part of every ring signature transaction. There can exist only one key image for each output on the blockchain. Yet due to its cryptographic properties, it is not possible to determine which output created which key image. A list of all used key images are maintained in the blockchain, enabling miners to verify that no outputs are spent twice. Let's go through an example to see how all this works. Alice wants to send Monero to Bob with a ring size value of five. One of the five inputs will come from Alice's wallet, which will be consumed in the transaction. The other four inputs are arbitrarily picked from the blockchain and are used as decoys. This forms a group of five possible signers, where all ring members are plausibly the actual signer of the transaction. To an outside observer, including to Bob himself, it's not clear which input was truly signed by Alice's one-time spend key. However, with the key image, the network is able to securely confirm that the Monero being transferred to Bob has not been spent before. As you can see, by using ring signatures, 
Monero protects the privacy of the sender by obscuring the source of inputs and in doing so, ensures that the origin of any Monero remains untraceable. To increase the privacy of both parties, Ring Confidential Transactions, commonly referred to as Ring CT, were implemented to hide transaction amounts. Ring CT brings some improvement to the Ring Signature Protocol. Now, I know what you're thinking. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before, unafraid to reference or not reference, put it in a blender, shit on it, vomit on it, eat it, give birth to it. Super, super cool, right? But it's probably way over your head. Don't worry, I'm in the same boat. But what about your IP address? Isn't that how they trace Bitcoin and bust criminals? For this problem, Monaro uses Corvi, which is a free, decentralized, anonymity technology. Corvi encrypts internet traffic using garlic encryption and the garlic router. For those who may not have heard of garlic routing, it is a more secure version of onion routing, where multiple messages are encrypted together to make it harder to conduct traffic analysis. This allows Corvi to create a completely secure and private overlay network on the internet. Let me explain. When I go to send a Bitcoin transaction, my device needs to connect to a node on the Bitcoin network or the Lightning network with my IP address. That IP address can then be easily traced back to the internet provider, which means there is no privacy when it comes to Bitcoin. Your wallet and identity can remain confidential forever, but if Big Brother wants to track you down, it's only gonna take them a few minutes. This is where Corby comes into the mix. Take a look at the diagram on the screen. When Ashley sent that Monaro to Bree, what happens is Ashley's device connects to a anonymous Corby node. Because the nodes are anonymous and the node operators do not know anything about the information inside that transaction, it makes it impossible to trace transactions as they are sent through three layers of nodes. The nodes do not store a list of any information about the items. I would love to take this opportunity to invite anybody from the Monaro team onto the show for an interview. Even if they are not doxxed and they would like to stay anonymous, I am completely cool with it. Or if anybody else is really experienced in the Monaro community and you'd like to come on the show to teach us more about Monaro, please reach out. I'd love to have you. You can shoot me a DM on Twitter at Ryan Matamedia. Next up, we are going to make some price predictions. But before we dive in, could you also do me a favor? I'm looking for new video ideas. Could you drop some comments below if there are any crypto projects you want me to make a video on? Or even if you just have general video ideas, I'm always looking for new content. Please and thank you. And big shout out to Justice at DigiCryptJC on Twitter, man. This one's for you, homie. Thanks for requesting this video. Awesome, awesome project. Now, let's dive into these Monaro price predictions. Monaro currently has a price point of $155.61. Its circulating supply is 18,196,354 coins out in circulation, which gives us a market cap of 2,832,600,406 dollars to be exact. Let's round to keep things simple. If you invested in Monaro today and the price of Monaro is $150 and the market cap is 2.9 billion, for you to 2x on that investment and for the price of XMR to hit $300, the market cap would need to hit $5.8 billion. For you to 10x on that investment and for the price of XMR to hit $1,500, the market cap would need to hit $29 billion. For you to 20x on that investment and for the price of XMR to hit $3,000, the market cap would need to hit $58 billion. And for you to 100x on an XMR investment and for the price of XMR to hit $15,000, the market cap would need to hit $290 billion. What are my personal price predictions for Monaro XMR? That's a great question. I've reviewed pretty much every single top 200 project listed on CoinMarketCap, and there are honestly three cryptocurrencies I hold. Cadena makes up 45% of my portfolio, Bitcoin makes up 40% of my portfolio, Flux makes up 5% of my portfolio, and then I have 10% on exchanges doing bot trading. So let me just say, it's very rare that I find a crypto project that I actually like this much. It is 100% decentralized, it's proof of work, there is no pre-mine and no VCs. It has no max supply, which is normally a huge red flag, but the inflation rate is less than 1%, and that will continue to depreciate, which is just insanely awesome. It's really a beautiful cryptocurrency. But I'm not smart enough to understand if this is something like Tornado Cash that governments could forcibly shut down or blacklist or banned IP addresses. So. Hopefully somebody from the Monaro team reaches out for an interview because I would love to dive deeper into this project. Which means, no, I don't own any and I don't think I plan to own any, 
but that might change. My personal 2023 Monaro price prediction would be between $300 and $350, best case. My 2025 XMR price prediction is $1,500 to $2,000, which would give it around a $29 to $35 billion market cap. And man, do I love that YouTube shows me who my top commenters are. Big shout out to 619, Satoshi Nakata, Mr. Kennedy, Orson Vega, Carol Tonder, Aussie Toker, Puff Puff Pass, and special thanks to everybody for the likes, shares, and retweets. Y'all mean the world to me. Good vibes always, crypto fam.